Hey guys, how's it going? This video is on the new moon we have coming up in Scorpio on November 18th, 2017. Um, and we have the Sun, Venus, and Jupiter all in Scorpio. So this is intense Scorpionic energy that I think we all already feel at this point. Um, it's intense. And the new moon is already uh, the darkest time of the month because the new the moon disappears and other than the stars, our sky is completely uh, filled with darkness. And Scorpio is, of course, the dark and brooding watery archetype of the zodiac. So not the uh, most light and fluffy moon, that's for sure. Um, but it is deeply transformative. Uh, it is calling for a very, very deep surrender to a situation. Um, it's calling for transformation. Uh, Scorpio is about regeneration. It's about intuition and um, complete and total transparency. Uh, it's calling for complete vulnerability, which is, of course, pretty uncomfortable um, sometimes. Scorpionic transformation is not really that type of transformation where we uh, consciously look to the future and think, oh, I would really like to transform this thing about myself, so I'm going to do that. Scorpio is more like... <laughs> transformation against your will or, um, you know, your soul's evolution calling for something to change. Uh, usually something we've become attached to that is no longer serving us, be it a relationship or an addiction, um, or a habit, whatever. So, uh, you know, we have to feel a little bit bad for Scorpio because it is the part of the Zodiac where these uh, unhealthy um, attachments are severed. Um, and it is the, the dissolving of the ego. Scorpio is complete merging with source, um, which is why it's associated with sexuality. But in order to completely merge with source, the dissolving of the ego has to take place. And the ego does not want to die, and it puts up an incredibly um, hard fight. And that can be very painful as the ego clings on and wants desperately to stay separate and doesn't want to surrender to whatever this is. Um, this is where the really painful aspect of Scorpio can take place. No, I don't want to let go. I want, I want things to stay this way. And life is calling for, um, something else. Uh, so yes, dissolving of the ego and calling for us to completely surrender to what is before us. Um, Scorpio also is the only sign in the Zodiac that has three archetypal characters. So, you know, Libra, we have the scales, and with Pisces, we have the fish. With Scorpio, we have three. And we have the scorpion, which is the more primal, um, usually the more shadow aspects of Scorpio. So jealousy, addiction, possession, envy, vindictive behavior, uh, that kind of thing. Then we have the eagle. Uh, and the way I see the Scorpionic Eagle is that Scorpios have this incredible, uniquely Scorpio ability to um, really see from a very high perspective uh, all of a situation. And at the same time, they have the ability to zero in using the eagle eye from their height to the depth of a situation. And they really have this very um, cosmic, uh, ancient ability to see um, into the depths of a situation. 
and it's this very majestic archetype because they're so connected to source and they feel things so deeply that they can really, um, more than any other sign in the zodiac, really understand uh, from a very deep, passionate level what's happening. And then finally, what I like to call the realized Scorpio, we have the phoenix. And the phoenix is, of course, the beautiful bird that burns, you know, and then rises from the ashes and the flames and becomes this majestic phoenix bird. Um, so every Scorpio has these three archetypes within them, kind of lying like a seed. And throughout life, hopefully, the Scorpio will evolve out of the lower vibration scorpion tendencies uh, that I mentioned, like jealousy and et cetera, and become the phoenix and rise above all that through, you know, death and rebirth and then again death and rebirth and this kind of, you know, shedding of the old and um, coming into the new self. So on a collective level, we have the opportunity to do that. Whether or not we have Scorpio in our chart, as a collective, we're all really getting to experience what Scorpio is and what it feels like. Um, so we, we can um, look at it that way and welcome the opportunity to take the high road and not uh, get stuck in the lower vibrations of despair and... Um, you know, lashing out, uh, or, you know, just depression and fear. Um, but we can rise above and we can become the Eagle and we can see the situation from a high vantage point And then finally become the Phoenix, do the work, shed the old, no matter how painful it is and transform into this new being. Um, I wanted to read the Sabian symbol for this moon. Um, Sabian symbols are awesome. If you're not familiar with them, give it a Google search. I like to use the Sabian symbols by uh, Elias Lonsdale. I'm not 100% sure that I'm saying that right, uh, but it's E-L-L-I-A-S Lonsdale. And um, Sabian symbols are essentially a creative phrase to put uh, creative imagery to the overall vibe of a moment in time as indicated by uh, the degree of the planet. So I looked up the Sabian symbol for Scorpio uh, 26 degrees to get this kind of mystical, um, creative look at what we're all feeling right now. And it's really cool. So I wanted to read it. So Scorpio, 26 degrees, and the image is a she-wolf, her udders full of milk. Bearing within you something vast and wild and true, your instincts given over to this seed. What can be must be impels sacrifice and renunciation, being held in the grip of vast primordial forces taken over by depths that forge new worlds into being. <clears throat> Stunned into submission, unconsciously obsessed with something that lives within you and cannot be forgotten. Supercharged with energy, in tune with the earth's cycles. Everything happening in a magnified and hypnotic atmosphere. The hidden worlds take charge. Individuality is eclipsed and the surge of power dominates consciousness and life by its intensity and ruthless current right through the body and there is nothing to say about it. Intense, right? So yeah, um, there is this magnified hypnotic atmosphere. Scorpio is incredibly mystical and it's the underworld. So we're kind of like wandering around the catacombs of the darkness right now and um, bumping into our shadows, bumping into our fears, discovering new levels of desire that lie within us. Scorpio, again, is incredibly sexual as well. So this could be affecting your feelings surrounding sexuality, 
discovering new dimensions through sexuality. Um, and, you know, sexuality isn't just about physical pleasure. Sexuality is about deep connection um, to source. So it's all very deep, very emotional, and we're being called to see things uh, in a very new and profound way and then transform to meet them. Uh, last thing is, yeah, so all this Scorpio, intense, emotional, crazy, hard, and on top of that, we have Mars and Libra squaring Pluto in Capricorn. So I want to mention this because Mars in Libra is about relationships with other people, because Libra is about that, uh, and squaring, which is not a harmonious uh, aspect to Pluto. And Mars and Pluto, those two planets, uh, that's war, essentially, uh, when, they're, when they're making those those types of um, disharmonious aspects to one another. So um, before the new moon gets here uh, on the 18th, maybe taking some time to meditate, using this scorpionic ability to see things to their depths, becoming the eagle so you can see from a high vantage point what's going on, and um, meditating on what your higher self would do, feeling into areas of tension in your life with another person if they're there, and thinking about what your higher self would do. So that that way, on the new moon, on the 18th, uh, and oh, as well, we have the new moon forming a quincunx to Uranus in Aries, which is quick and sudden, explosive types of stuff. So that way, before that gets there, you have a game plan of how to confront the situation from a very majestic uh, vantage point. So you can become the phoenix. So you have that um, you have that with you before it gets before it gets here. Um, yeah. So I am really excited for the sun to move into Sagittarius. We're almost there, guys. It's gonna yeah. Just hang in there. Um, and also. Uh, Neptune goes direct on November 22nd. Um, this is going to come to some relief, I think, because it's going to allow us to, I think, become a little bit more grounded finally and maybe get some more grounded insights into all this mystical craziness that we've been uh, experiencing. Neptune's been retrograde for a while, and Neptune is the planet of dreams and the astral realm and fantasy. So while it's been retrograde, on the positive, things have been very um, mystical, but uh, it's been a little bit hard to determine for a few months now what's real and what isn't. So I think once it stations direct, we might have a clearer understanding at the things that we're dealing with in our life. But um, important to remember that when a planet stations direct, uh, when it moves the other direction from being retrograde for a while, um, there is a surge or an activation of whatever that planet represents. So on the 22nd, uh, look forward to and expect a surge of kind of mystical occurrences. You may feel more psychic. You may feel, I mean, we're always living in a dream realm, but you may feel that get even more true. Um, you may experience more dreams that night, whatever. Um, so yeah, Neptune goes direct, November 22nd. Awesome. Um, I'm going to wrap it up because we're already at 14 minutes. But hang in there. Happy transforming. Um, surrender, surrender, surrender. It's going to make it easier. And I will see you guys very soon.